I, number one rule is if you love it, other people will. There you go. That's it. That, that, that's gold. <laughs>
and then a three bedroom, two bath over here, and they're completely different as far as what they can command and what we call ADR or yeah, average MGR daily rate. rate. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and, and going back to the local thing, it, it's also important to find, I mean, you mentioned a realtor earlier, but not only finding a realtor that at least has a working knowledge of short-term rentals, but knows the local market, because if somebody came to me and said, hey, I wanna buy a short-term in, um, in Kerrville, no, there's no way in heck I'm going to Kerrville. You need to find a local realtor that understands where they're going to find the information on, is it allowable? We talked about that in another video. You know, what, um, what, is there anything that's gonna be built behind this property? You may have a gorgeous view now and then it'll, it'll end up at Walmart in two years. Um, so, you know, not only the, the local realtor, but the local property manager, like you said, having that, wor that working knowledge of it. Yeah, the, the agent is crucial and that's your first step because yeah. regulation's huge. Yep. HOAs are huge, so the, the real estate agent's really gonna be able to point you in, yep. in the right direction. They're also going to know, is this home set up properly? Right. You know, equal number of bedrooms and bathrooms is a huge, huge. <laughs> it is, it is. But if you're working with a real estate agent who doesn't understand that, they're gonna keep pointing you in the direction of, you know, the five bedroom, two bath, which doesn't work for short Four term twos are like the bane of my existence. It's like, yeah. oh, this is nice, this, oh, it's a two bathroom. Bathrooms or three, are one. so three, yeah. One. Bathrooms or, are so uh, important. God, yeah, I mean, I could go all, all the all the weird ones, but yeah, it, it's having having that bathroom for that bedroom is key. Because again, you mentioned in another video about people traveling in groups. Like you may have a couple, you know, two or three couples traveling together. Well, nobody wants to share a bathroom when they're on vacation. Yeah. No, I don't, especially with, with a real estate. Or having to sneak into somebody else's bedroom in the middle oh, of the yeah. night to use their bathroom. Yeah, go through that's their the bedroom to the bathroom. One. That's the other little weird thing that I've seen. And I'm like, oh, this is awkward. And when you're buying the house, you don't think about no. it. But no, when you you're a guest, you're definitely, definitely thinking about it. So the best thing to think of is when someone goes on vacation, they want to stay in a house that is nicer than the house right. they currently live in. And that's why it's a vacation. That's right. You know, you want to be, you want to walk in and that house has got to have that wow factor. That's why people go to resorts. Right, it's because it, their their house is nowhere near as nice as that. I mean, well, and I want room service. And That's a... right, yeah, room <laughs> service too. That's an add-on. That's a that Airbnb uh, extra. What what is that thing called? Um, yeah, yeah, the the amenities, which which we can do. We can have a chef come in. There, there you, you know, go. We can have food delivery. We can have the all the groceries in the fridge by the time you arrive. But you want to be able to check off as many boxes as possible on Airbnb and Verbo. Is it, uh, is there a pack and play? Yeah. You know, is there a swimming pool? Are there outdoor games? And, that, and that's the research. Again, 30,000 foot view, that's the research that's required to go into this. And if it doesn't have it, okay, well, what's the cost of putting it in? Because in Texas, we know in the summer, you better have a swimming pool. Um, and if you don't have a swimming pool, if you want a nice swimming pool, you better pull $200,000 in cash out of your pocket because that's what it's gonna take. Now there's cheaper versions of that, but again, having the knowledge of it and do they, do they command the same you know, additional rent, you know, a really nice pool with a, with a waterfall, it's a little bit different than a cowboy pool. I would think that they're not as valuable, right? Because those have gotten really popular lately. They and have. That's why you're laughing. I'm laughing because I didn't know what a cowboy pool was a year ago, but now I do. But <laughs> like it's a horse trough with a pump. That's it, that's it. But you haven't lived until you have a, a one of those with an outboard motor in it. That's oh, that. nice. And now you turn it into a hot tub in, in July. <laughs> But it still gets to check that box. But pool. you can still check the box. But that's a perfect example of a pool isn't necessarily a pool in, in both scenarios, and each are going right. to command higher nightly rates. And some things are just a value add. It's just going to set you apart. So when I'm comp looking at six different houses, and this one house may have something uh, that the others do not, it doesn't necessarily command more per night, but it'll get rented more often because it has something that the rest don't. You want your house to be best in class. And I was gonna say that that goes back to, and we're gonna get into this in another video, but that goes back to how do you showcase things? Because when people rent things online, it's all about photos. So maybe, yeah, does this house have a hot tub already? Oh, sweet, if not, I've gotta drop 6,000 into it to add a hot tub because I want people to know, check that box, this has a hot tub, here we go. Professional photography is <laughs> one thing that we forgot on our vendor list in one of our previous oh. videos. But I will tell you that Airbnb and VRBO have, as a part of their logarithms, 
professional photography. And if those photos are not high resolution, right. then you rank lower in the search for professional right. photos. So, and you're selling something that somebody, you said it, you only see it in right. photos. And so the one thing that you want is that appearance of that house to look exactly like that photo, if not better. I've been on a plane for five hours and driven for an hour to get to your house. And when I walk in, it better look better than what I saw online. Yeah, absolutely. But professional photography is, is a great way to do it. But some of the unique things that you can do as well, is, even if you're managing it yourself, is to offer some type of concierge services. Yeah. If someone calls me and says, hey, do you want groceries delivered before I arrive? Heck yeah, I please, do. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, does it come, a lot of people think, oh, I don't need cable TV. You can just stream. Well, guess what? Here in Texas, it's football country. And if the game is on and I can't see it because I don't have that streaming service, we're going to be a little upset, you know? Um, so little things like that that add up to have, you know, linens, two sets of pillows. Yeah. I like to have a soft pillow. Some people want, might want to have a, a goose down. Uh, blankets, throw, yeah. just having a throw blanket. I and, mean, and taking that back into what you're looking for when you're looking at houses, you you know you, you better have a lot of storage because you're going to need locked closets for your cleaning uh, cleaning crew and all of that stuff and chemicals and all the other things. You got to be able to lock that stuff away. You're mentioning if you've got two to three sets of linens for every bed and you've got two to three sets of towels for every you know every bathroom and all this other stuff, you had better have a place to put all of that stuff. In addition to, you can't just throw it in a closet that a guest has because they need a closet too, right? So yeah, you know. owner lockouts are are important, especially if you're going to be using this home for personal use as well. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I always encourage people when they're looking at a home. Do you like it? Right. Yeah. Because if you don't like it, other people won't like it that's either. Right. If you're buying it purely because you think that's what the market commands then think again, you really, would you want to stay there? Yep. Do you like the home? You know, but you also have to look at what holes exist in the market, right? So um, do your research, go on Airbnb, go on Verbo, search that area and say, okay, if I put in a six bedroom that sleeps, you know, 12, how many of those are going to pull up? Right. And then do your research. If I, I put in a three bedroom that sleeps six, that is the most common that's the most common, three that sleep six. But if you have a three bedroom that sleeps eight, guess what? You, you just cut your different. search in half, That's right? Right. So look so for what's missing. So do you have an office that you can convert or something like that in that, in that house? Okay. Yeah, abso absolutely. Or if you have a larger bedroom that maybe would accommodate two beds two, yeah, versus- Two queens. Yep. yep, two queens versus one. So do your market research, find out what's missing. I know here in the Dripping Springs market, we only have three hotels. Right. And we That's have, pretty important to know, right? It and is. one of them barely just opened after like three years of getting built. Yes, <laughs> it did. And the other two are pretty aging. Yes, They've yes. They've been around for a long time. Um, you know, know your market. It's hard to get an Uber here. So if someone's right. here for a wedding, the chances of them on a Friday night or a Saturday night getting an Uber back into town are, are nearly impossible. Impossible. Yep. impossible. So know where your wineries are. Know where your wedding venues are. Partner with them and and create incentives yep. for them to book your house but and so that that's i mean you know go, going back into how do i how do i find a profitable property well if it's not the market that you're living in you better go spend some time there and understand like you're saying if somebody is in dallas but they want to invest here they better have somebody on the ground who can tell them, hey, this is a good location because you've got five wedding venues around it and there's three breweries here and four wineries are within 15 minutes. Like that's a, that's a valuable house as opposed to a house maybe further south that is not close to any of the wedding venues. Um, you know, there's no breweries out there and there's three wineries. So again, having that, having that working knowledge, if you don't have anybody local, you better be able to research it. Yeah. The other thing to really keep in mind is when you're searching on these OTAs or online travel agents, agencies is that it searches from the city center yes. outward. So it's always going to pull up something that's in downtown versus in the farther you get out in the sticks, the less likely you are to show up and search. Sure. So, you know, and then you also have to remember sometimes maybe you have an address that's an Austin address, 
but it's actually in the county. That's right. And so those tend to be more popular because they have an Austin address and there's a lot more people searching in the Austin market than they would be in the Dripping Springs. going all the way Springs. out to Dripping Springs. Right. Even though you are. <laughs> even though you are, you are, you just happen to have an Austin address. Those, those tend to do more as well. But looking for something that doesn't exist in the market, really you have to partner with the real estate agent to see that. And you have to find a good property manager. A good property manager will tell you they right know. away, this is what we need. We need five bedrooms that sleep 12 people with a swimming pool on two acres. I would tell you right now, that's right. what you need to buy. Well, and then and then the, the onus at that point is on the investor not to jump because they get antsy because they have to wait for that property to hit the market. Um, you know, if, if that's what's needed in the market, if that's what's gonna cash flow, if that's what's gonna make the most money, don't buy a one bedroom just because it's available wait for that five bedroom or whatever that, that niche property is. Well, that's a great thing too, because guess what? Your operating expenses are pretty much the same on a one bedroom that they are on a five bedroom. Yep. Your, your cost, your AC doesn't go up that much, your water, nope. your internet and your cable are exactly, exactly the, the same. same. You know, so Septic you're- well. Right, yeah. but guess what? You're gonna make you know two to three times more on that larger home than you would on that one bedroom. Now, that's not to say there's a lot of uh, beginning investors who just wanna get into yeah. the market, yeah. and a one bedroom might be a great place for them to start, and then you know we talked about before doing that 1031 exchange and rolling up to bigger and nicer properties. Um, so if that's where you wanna start, that's where you wanna start. Yeah. But remember, operating costs are kind of fixed regardless of the size of your home. That makes sense. Anything else um, in terms of making sure that you pay attention to it when you're trying to find something that makes money? I, number one rule is if you love it, other people will. There you go. That's it. That, that, that's gold. <laughs> All right, guys, if this is the kind of content that you like, that you're looking for, if you're finding value in it, click subscribe, click that little bell notification, give us a like. Um, we're putting out content like this at least once a week, and we're going to be doing it for a long time. So we'll see you on the next video.